consistency and commitment was easy for me because I always jump into the deep end of the pool. I figured out what the temperature was later. And so I had to alter my methods and my body forced me to do that because when you have a body full of pain, I'm actually the one who's responsible for this pain. And it did something that was very vulnerable for me. I reached out and I asked for help. Today's guest is Christopher Mayer, retired Navy SEAL and holistic wellness practitioner. In this episode, Chris shares his powerful life story of how he put down his guns, healed physically and mentally from combat, and entered his path to physical and spiritual enlightenment. That at least put me on the path, and I needed much deeper help than that because I had also had childhood trauma that had never been dealt with. I was basically moving through life, piling ice cream on top of shit and calling it ice cream. All right, my friends, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another amazing episode here on the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project podcast. Today, we're joined by guest expert Christopher Maher. He is a retired U.S. Navy SEAL, a best-selling author, and a holistic wellness practitioner. And Christopher is regarded as an unparalleled authority in stress revolu- resolution, personal evolution, and quite frankly, healing on all levels. As we're going to hear in today's episode, Chris had his own healing journey, obviously as a SEAL and elite athlete. And as you can imagine, that beat up his body to quite an extent that he was in a lot of pain and had to turn to this journey of self-healing that led him into traditional Chinese medicine, Qigong, as well as integrating other Western healing practices to arrive at his own system that he calls true body intelligence, which is a technology and system for healing on all levels that fuses the physical understanding of soft tissues in the body, but also deeply addresses the mental, emotional, even spiritual dimensions of ourselves that show up as this totality of our stress, of things we're holding on to, and how we can actually get to the root cause of being well on all levels. So I I am prepared for a deep conversation here. I think we're going to get into a lot from a man that's had a lot of range of experience. So Christopher, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I, I saw in one of your previous interviews that I listened that someone said you went from Navy SEAL to Sage, and I thought that was yes. a nice little like uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably something you didn't imagine you expected. So, because we're all fascinated with Navy SEALs, talk to us a little bit about like what got you into that, what the life of a SEAL was like, and how this kind of helped guide you in the early part of your life journey into this understanding of stress and healing. Yeah, what got me into that was I was helping a friend move. And in their basement, they had a biannual magazine about SEAL training. And on the cover of the magazine was like five, six or seven or eight boat crews, you know, running down the beach with a telephone pole on their shoulder, you know, green pants, white Mm t-shirts with their name written in the center and the grimace on their faces. And I looked at that and literally within 0.2 seconds, I got a really strong guttural hit that that was for me and i knew that that uh, environment that community was going to stretch me so i picked up the magazine i read through it really quickly and then you know a week later i was at the recruiters and you know a few months later i was gone wow right it's like for me if i get a strong guttural hit yeah i go for it i never look back yeah like you know other people they like to look into the past or no I'm like, this is for me. This is for sure. And, um, you know, when I got to SEAL training, it was very different than I think what I had imagined. And it was a lot of like serious physical output, right? Like the moment you land and you get on the beach in the morning, they call it PT, which is physical training, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And you're just beating yourself up every day. And, um, let me think, like, let's say you did cross, I'm sure a lot of people heard of CrossFit and did CrossFit and but imagine doing CrossFit, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours a day, every day, (laughs) right? After you get through that first week, you're like, I have no idea what's going on. And I remember for me, there was a point where we were doing these, um, these flutter kicks, seated flutter kicks on the beach and. You have these tan shorts on and the sand gets between your shorts and your skin and it wears a little red cherry at the crack of the the bottom of your sacrum, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember looking up towards the heavenly realms thinking, what? Why am I here? Like, what's, what's, what's the point of this? And I remember hearing the voice go, listen, 
suck it up. I need you to go through this. It'll make a lot of sense many years down the road. And I was like, okay, I'm in. Mm -hmm. So from that point, um, SEAL training was easy in the sense that I was 100% present, but difficult in the sense that I was really lean, right? Mm -hmm. And I did hydrostatic testing, so I was 1.8% body fat. <laughs> and they said, this seems too low. We yeah. need to redo the test. They did the test again and again and again and again and again. And then they came up with the assumption is the reason why mine is so low is I have no organ fat. There's no fat around my organs. Mm -hmm. So I struggled with hypothermia. Yeah. That core temperature was dropping down to 86, 80. Wow. I mean, 87.6, 87.4 degrees. And you can imagine, you know, the regular temp is what, 98.6. So if you go up to sort of 104, you know, you're cooking your brain. So imagine going the opposite direction, yeah. right, from 98.6 down to 87, right? So everything in my body is getting really cold. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out how to eat more food, mm -hmm. right? And for me, I was always someone who was in the fasting, just naturally. You know, I woke up in the morning when everyone was eating breakfast, I really was never hungry. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of study into human design and I'm actually designed to fast, but that was not the program for me to be me. So I would eat a lot of food right before I go to sleep and I started to put on some weight mm -hmm. and I gained about 25 pounds mm -hmm. and then things were easier for me. And then the SEAL teams, you know, it's a SEAL team. So it's, uh, it's full of hardened men who have um, no compromise. There's zero compromise in the SEAL teams, mm -hmm. okay? It's perfection all the time because guess what? Lives are on the line. You make a mistake, some, some, somebody dies. Even in a training evolution, right? You make a mistake, you get seriously hurt. Mm -hmm. So in that dynamic, you're on all the time from the moment you get to work in the morning till the time you get home at night. And remember, we do a lot of our work in the dark, mm -hmm. right? So there's odd hours and, you know, you work hard, you play hard. And, you know, I burned my energy at both ends of the candle. Yeah. And there was a cost for that. I had no idea because I was really young that there was going to be a cost. And the cost mm -hmm. was my joint health. Right. I ended with a lot of soft tissue injury, a lot of soft tissue pain. And then that breach branched into a reduction in vision, reduction in hearing, needing wow. a full blown hip replacement, pain at the center of my hip throbbing constantly all the time. And, you know, I'm, I'm making, um, giving you the distilled version. Sure. This is, a this is what this is a, that's a 12 year process to get to where right. I got to. So, right. and then, you know, I'm ambitious. In the sense that, you know, I want to squeeze the most out of the life experience. Mm -hmm. And so then I shifted out of the SEAL teams into um, wanting to run track and field again. <laughs> so found a coach, joined a team, and started training hard. The challenge is, is that I was applying strategies from SEAL training to training for what for me was going to be an Olympic dream. And none of that manifested. And the reason why is because I only had one speed, which was all in all the time. Mm -hmm. And even though I was out of the SEAL teams, I was still living like a SEAL team lifestyle. Go hard, right? Go hard, go hard. You can do that if you're like a ultra distance marathoner, right? You know, but when you're talking about peak speed and um, plus conditioning and finesse, you know, you have to use your body in a completely different fashion. And I sure. failed to be able to make that adjustment soon enough in order to make my dreams a reality. So that was a struggle. That was frustrating. You know, mm -hmm. you can imagine everything that I put my mind to, I was able to achieve easily because I had a strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, consistency and commitment was easy for me because I always jumped in, into the deep end of the pool. I figured out what the temperature was later, mm -hmm. right? Because I know how to take high risk. And you can imagine, guys, that 
go through SEAL training, make it into the SEAL teams. I was a high risk individuals, right? Yeah. They're willing to put everything on the line in order to achieve and experience what it is they want. Yeah. And so I had to alter my methods and my body forced me to do that because when you have a body full of pain, mm -hmm. um, at one point you're going to wake up and go, Oh, how am I co-creating this? Like I'm actually the one who's responsible for this pain. And I did something that was very vulnerable for me. I reached out and I asked for help. <laughs> and I got that help from a dear friend who also went through SEAL training, got into the SEAL teams and decided to uh, get out and go back to college and, you know, move his life in a different direction. And he offered me some serious help got me into juicing, got me looking at my body in terms of rolfing, structural integration, yoga, yeah. stretching. And that at least put me on the path. And I needed much deeper help than that because I had also had childhood trauma that had never been dealt with. Yeah. And so I was basically moving through life, piling ice cream on top of shit and calling it ice cream. For sure. And so then I had to you know, pull all the ice cream off the top and then really clean out the bowl. Yeah. And that took some time. You know, I devoted six, seven years of consistent effort of um, five, six hours a day, just removing stress, tension, and distortion out of my body, my brain, and my nervous system and seeking help from anyone, from a naturopath, from an osteopath, mm -hmm. from a body worker, from yoga, from uh, Qigong, from Tai Chi, from traditional Chinese medicine, from Taoist practices, from breath work, from Feldenkrais, from the Gosku method. I mean, I looked under every available stone and fallen tree in the woods to see if there was some value. Mm -hmm. And then I started to really understand things. I started to understand the limitations of each one of these systems. Mm -hmm. I started to get a lot of help from a lot of other people who knew things that I knew nothing about. And then suddenly it all started to really click in and make sense because mm -hmm. I started to apply all the work every single day. And I basically took the discipline and the hard work and the effort and the consistency that I learned from SEAL training and I turned it into HEAL training. <laughs> right yeah. i put my vision back online yeah okay i'm gonna be 56 i never wear glasses uh my hearing is awesome uh my sleep is deep and profound i wake up every morning whether i get three hours of sleep four hours of sleep five hours six hours i'm totally on point i feel great i look good and um i perform every day at a very high level and i deal with very complex uh situations and i help people find you know simple pragmatic solutions for very complex uh emotional experiences and i help them and then i teach them how to maintain a high state of freedom within themselves so they can have inner peace like they can have experience inner freedom and then be at peace with the world around them i mean yes <laughs> it sounds like exactly what I want to get into unpacking. And I, and I just also want to say you literally just distilled a life journey up to this point in 10 minutes. And I think you did a brilliant job. I, I, I feel like I have an understanding of your trajectory, but also I know that you literally just gave us facts and, and everything, the transformation that happened between all those different details is, is profound to have you here in such an integrated way. Something that strikes me is the significance of how everything is connected when we look back, like, well, you haven't exactly shared what your childhood trauma is, but that obviously played a big role into um, the fire that you have had in your being and your personality that you've channeled first into SEALs and now into this mission to learn healing and then transmit that to others, that you've always listened to your intuition as a guide that got check is, is guided you on all these things. And I think where I want to take this now is certainly getting into some of your method, but first off through the frame of stress, because what I've seen in, in a lot of your content and training that I've reviewed is you talk about this idea of stress load and you think about, you think about and talk about stress in a slightly different way than maybe the mainstream conversation and, and on deep levels, like that there's stress in related to this like generational trauma level 
as well as stress maybe with our environment not being conducive to natural law and right living, and then maybe our mental emotional patterns. So let's get into talking about like the stress concept, and then we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. Um, the way that I look at stress is um, imagine you have a load, right? So some form of weight, mm -hmm. right? And it's sitting on a two by four between two benches. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then every day you decide to add a little more. And then every week add a little more where there's going to come a point where that two by four is going to begin to split because the load of force, gravitational force, right? Mm -hmm. Pushing down on it is greater than it can support. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when you look at humans, humans can recover, um, even a healthy human, like a supremely healthy human can only recover from so much stress in a certain period of time. And so I break things down into 24 hours. Right. So you've got your daily accumulated stress load mm -hmm. and then you have your lifetime accumulated stress load and your lifetime accumulated stress load is made up of what? everything that you've experienced in this lifetime that went unresolved up until this point through your daily accumulated stress. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, someone you know um, went to work and a typical day is eight hours. Mm -hmm. And today they had to work 14 because they have a deadline that they have to meet. And then suddenly that pattern of this this deadline that pressure of that deadline now causes them the next four weeks to have to put in 12 and 14 hours a day and they're used they're used to put in in eight right mm -hmm. so that means now that time that they would be recovering that time that they would be in peace that time that they would be in their hobbies and personal development is now being devoted to focus work right yeah so that means that the stress from Monday that goes unresolved, that was never going to be resolved by sleep because it's greater than what you can resolve with your sleep and your nutrition mm -hmm. is now Monday's going into Tuesday. And now Monday and Tuesday stress loads are now inside of Wednesday. Yeah. Now Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday is now inside of Thursday. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit, right? Well, guess what? Do that for 30 years. Yeah. And guess what happens? One day you bend over to pick up a towel that's fallen onto the kitchen floor and now you can't get back up. Mm -hmm. Why? Because over time, right, your lifetime accumulated stress load has gotten so high that now you're going to have what you would term as the experience of blunt force trauma. Right. You go down to pick up this this uh, this is a sort of benign experience and you're grabbing this towel and next thing you know you can't get off the floor yeah and you're bedridden and people go to work hey where's uh, bob oh something happened to bob's back and now bob is in six months of recovery because bob ignored right how to live a healthy life and deal with his lifetime accumulated stress loads. And when you look at your lifetime accumulated stress load, it's also made up of your generational tension, stress, and distortion that was passed off to you mm -hmm. before you ever came out of your mother's womb, right? So we're talking at an epigenetic level right. and a genetic level. Then you've got environment, right? Yep. So your parents' inner deficiencies, their fears, their insecurities, and their limiting beliefs for the first 13 years mm -hmm. that you're in that environment because you're still in a precognitive state of function at some level until yeah. the charge on your water molecules changes from negative to positive as it does when you're 13 and you start the individuation process. So imagine, so now you've got your daily accumulated stress from every day. You've got your environmental stress at an unconscious and subconscious level that's being baked into your nervous system. And then you have what's already been the foundational blocks of who it is you are at a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual level at the genetic and epigenetic level, right? Yeah. Okay, so 
So throw that in and then add in something that makes it even more complex is um, what, what strategy you use in order to survive those circumstances, mm -hmm. right? So what strategies do people use? Some people use uh, excessive ambition. Yeah. Right? Some people use withdraw. Yep. Other people use bulldozing. Mm -hmm. Other people become overly amenable, right? Mm -hmm. Other people become overly adaptive. Other people become overly adjusted, right? And so wherever you're choosing to implement these strategies, then what happens is you start developing a false self-projected survival based expression versus your truest nature for sure right so every human that you've ever known and every human that i've ever known has been in the same dynamic and the reason why is because all humans have been dealt and handed a broken down suitcase and what i mean by that is the survival based strategies that were passed off from generation to generation are literally inside the baby's body when the baby comes out. Mm -hmm. And all parents have fears. All parents have limiting beliefs. All parents have insecurities. All parents have inner deficiencies. Right? So these, these states of dysfunction are undebatable. Every mm -hmm. human is coming into this environment, um, a bit behind the ball curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what happens is if we can either address those things at some level, or they begin to take us over. How do we know they're taking us over? All you have to do is look at what is your favorite daily acceptable drug? Is it nicotine? Is it caffeine? Is it alcohol? Is it marijuana? Is it, uh, pharmaceutical drugs? Is it recreational drugs? Is it sugar? Is it food colorings? Is it preservatives? Like whatever your fate, is it all of them? Is it half of them? Right? Why? Because all those substances cause humans to, to do what? They get to numb out, mm -hmm. right? They take the brain and they numb out the brain. Well, if I numb out my brain, it puts me in a situation where I no longer have to feel. Well, what am I avoiding feeling? I'm avoiding feeling the separation from myself. Okay. And the more that I use the daily acceptable drugs, okay, the more separated I get from myself. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is my strategy that I use to survive my circumstances can become my winning strategy for life. And then yeah. once my ego receives positive feedback that that's a correct strategy, I continue to fuel that strategy with more effort, more energy, more consistency, more passion. And then eventually I wake up one day, I've had the success that I've craved, right? And yet I'm way far away from the person that I was actually designed to be. That's quite a conundrum to be in, right? Think of the juxtaposition of that. Yeah. And how complex that is at a psycho emotional level. For sure. Okay. And so what's, what's, what's the solution? There's, the solution is you have to reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load mm -hmm. to a point where you're able to take a risk. And the risk is to be yourself. Well, how will you know who you are if you're unable to take the risk? Mm -hmm. right? Like, think about this. We're living on a planet right now where there's 10 wars going on simultaneously. And you and I are sitting here on the opposite end of that. We're having a conversation about health and wellness and stress and personal development and growth. And yet all we need to do is travel 6,000 miles in any direction from you and I. Yeah. And we're going to find conflict. Yep. Right. And yet everybody on the planet knows that they, they know at a, at a base level that they are love. Yeah. Okay. That, um, that kindness matters, right? Consideration matters. Okay. Emotions and feelings matter. 
uh, thought process, spiritual development, a connection to source matters. And yet this is going on. Well, how could this be going on unless all of us were playing a part at some level? Mm -hmm. And everyone is because everyone was born into a body filled with survival based strategies. Mm -hmm. For sure. I'm with you. I'm with you in all of this. And I guess where I want to go now at this point in the conversation is practical frameworks that someone can begin to evaluate, understand, and lighten their accumulated stress burden? Like, where do people start looking? What do they start doing? If doing is even the first step of it, right? Like, because it seems to me there's two parts of this. It's one, there's this deep cleaning up, releasing, uh, realigning, lightening, that probably happens on the level of the body and the mind and the emotions and uh, consequently the spirit. And then there's how to proceed through life in a clean manner to be your authentic self without accumulating more. And in fact, continually deaccumulating if there's still some left. So I'd love to talk about that in the time we have. Yeah. Um, those are good questions. And for the listener, the thing you have to think about first is observation, right? Awareness, right? And as you de-stress and detense and de-distort at a physical, at a mental, at emotional, at an energetic level, you have an increased amount of awareness. And the question is, what do you do with that awareness? Well, what I did with it is I applied more energy, more effort, more resources to continue to keep lightening the load, as you termed it, right? Reducing. And as I reduced more, I gained more clarity. Mm -hmm. What to do with my time, what to do with my energy, what to do with my skill set, what to do with my resources to benefit myself and those around me. Mm -hmm. And then I use that to then inspire others to then find others to help them. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, for me, one of the fundamental aspects of change is you're going to get to a point where you've reached some level of homeostasis. Yes. That's high enough where you can start to impact the field around you yeah. in a positive direction. Definitely. And so as I lighten that load, um, every month, every week, every day, every year, um, I continue to have more opportunities to impact others around me, right? Mm -hmm. And so now my motivation is very different. My motivation initially was I wanted to have this experience of getting to the Olympic trials, mm -hmm. okay? Well, once I got balanced, I was no longer interested in using my body in that way mm -hmm. because I had the opportunity to help someone else have the experience of inner freedom and outer peace. And for me, that had greater value than the things that I was focused on from my own inner deficiencies. Yep. So now here I am, I'm working with other people and impacting them at a personal level. And then that moves into then teaching, right? Because as you get more free, everyone around you gets more free. And the question is why and how? All nervous systems orientate to the highest functioning nervous system in a collective field, <laughs> right? So when I'm in alignment, everyone around me is also in alignment. Mm -hmm. That is the service. That is the commitment that I'm offering to everyone else so that they no longer have to do all of the heavy lifting that I did. So I continue to do everything that I can to keep myself in supreme alignment so that I can create more impact, right? More positive impact so that others know, hey, there's actually an opportunity to have a sense of freedom, to have a consistent sense of peace, to have access to a consistent sense of joy, to be able to have access to feelings of hopefulness, mm -hmm. to be um, passion focused, and so lightening the load 
leads to greater opportunities to create profound impact. Yeah. So the lighter I get, the more impactful I become. And so yes. now my motivation is impact on self, family, community, culture, nation, globe. Yes. Right? And so now I'm looking at myself as this multi-dimensional being in terms of my impact. Yep. And that is what is more important for me. What I what I notice when you share that is that activity is one thing. The orientation behind the activity is what makes it either generative or accumulating of energy and life energy or dissipating Yes. at this point, because you are free internally and you have healed and you have unloaded, you are still incredibly active and maybe even more so active, but it is in a way that is actually building you and others up around you versus the activity that is through dissipative relationships. What are we committed to that? We're actually not like what is out of alignment um, what's draining us that we know that we're still holding on to that can be a lot of activity. That's actually kind of depleting the, the life force and the alignment. So I see the, the landscape here and it seems that the person who is on the side of realizing there's a lot of, I'll use the word like these heavy power leaks, I guess, if you will, the lack of alignment mm -hmm. and healing on these levels must first ask some powerful questions to see where those leaks are happening. And then honestly, to create new commitments and perhaps boundaries and to cut some things off and to start some new things. But it's a, it's a deep cleanup process. It's like spring cleaning of your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually on all these levels. Yeah. I said to myself when I got into this and, you know, I've always listened to the inner voice and the inner voice said, look, you're going to have to be focused for 30 years. You're going to have to have a 30 year plan. And I was like, ooh, okay, 30 years. Like, that's like a serious commitment. And, you know, once I made the choice to do that and get in alignment with, you know, that covenant that I created with Source, then everything lined up for me, right? So what I mean by that is my focus is still the same, and that's to know love as its greatest measure and then to share the greatest measure of that love to create the greatest amount of impact. Mm -hmm. Right. That's been my one true focus for 24 years. Okay. Because that is my focus and that is my intent. I continue to meet more people who can help lighten another aspect of the load that I was unaware of. Yep. Because my intent and my commitment to that intent is so whole. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what I would offer to the listeners is look increase your observation of yourself okay look at where what you term very well leaks right where your energy is leaking out where your consciousness is leaking out where your um where your resources are leaking out where anger frustration agitation irritation fear um, hate, rage, anxiety, and, um, self-righteousness are bleeding into you, right? Mm -hmm. So seal up those holes. So those energies are no longer coming in, right? And then seal up the holes that are also letting your light, right? Leak out mm -hmm. in the places where there's actually no more benefit, Right. It's like, um, you know, I could surf every day for six hours to learn how to surf. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's going to come a point where six hours is I'm actually losing time mm -hmm. because I've achieved a certain level of skill. Well, now I only need to surf for five hours to have the same amount of fun, uh, to produce the same amount of result. Then. There's going to be three hours and two hours. So what I'm saying is there are diminishing returns. Yeah. And so if you're still going to the bar every night looking for love uh, and attention, there's going to come a point where you realize that this is unsatisfying. And at mm -hmm. that point, you have to make a shift. 
right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has to go through what they're going through. But when you put your focus on awareness, you know when it's time to pivot. Yes. Into a different direction. So never judge yourself. Like, yes. like walk away from judging and criticizing. Every human is here to struggle because that is a part of life, right? The more we struggle, the more we learn. Failure is the greatest part of success. Risk. Take some risk. If you have a relationship that is causing you too much anxiety, causing you too much anger, causing you too much frustration, causing you to be too self-righteous, then do yourself a favor and complete on that relationship, whether that's a relationship with food, whether that's a professional relationship, whether that's a personal, whether that's a romantic relationship. If the, if, if the detriment is greater than the reward, you have to be willing to be honest with yourself and step away and go, okay, I'm choosing more light, more love, and more presence. Mm -hmm. And when you make the choice to choose more light, more love, and more presence, the people who can help you get more of that, they show up. Why? Because yeah. this is an immersive collective field of energy that's constantly morphing and shifting to meet you at what it is you crave at the deepest part of yourself. <laughs> And so the intent is the greatest part of what you can create. So get clear on your intentions and then be committed as you can, right? Is it going to be perfect? No. Why? Because it's meant to be imperfectly perfect. Mm -hmm. Part of the process is losing to win, winning to lose. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we want to be able to be involved and understand the dynamics and the universal laws of development, of, of evolution, so that we can maintain a space of neutrality. And mm -hmm. so the purpose of lightening your load is to get into neutrality so you can add nothing and take nothing away. Simply see things for an actual account of what they are. Mm -hmm. And in neutrality, there's spaciousness. Now I can accept everything that everyone's doing outside of me because I realize that they have their own dynamic relationship with source. I can pull away my disapproval. I can pull away my judgment. I can lessen my criticism and I can get out of competing with source. And once I get out of competition with source, I then am a very powerful tool for transformation, for transmutation, for transfiguration, and for change. Because now I can do it at the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual level. Yeah. And so if what you here to experience is mastery in transformation and growth, then these are some basic stepping blocks that you have to understand. Reduce mm -hmm. your addiction to one of the daily, to one of the daily acceptable drugs. Take about a month. Every week, do ha use half of what you've been using until it no longer has an effect on you and you can step away from that. Because mm -hmm. everything that you put into your body is going to have an effect on your mind. If it's having an effect on your mind, it's affecting your emotions. If it's affecting your mind and your emotions, it's affecting your body. It's affecting your mind, your emotions, and your body. It's affecting your energy and your environment. Yep. And so if what you're looking for is inner freedom and outer peace, and you're looking at the world around you and you're thinking, wow, this is a crazy place to live, then you only have one real choice, and that is to become free internally and commit to being the change that you want to see in the world mm -hmm. and it's and get outside of fantasy because most humans live in fantasy they think well if i keep showing up every day and doing all the things that cause me problems i'm going to end up with a wonderful life mm -hmm. and the reality is that's a fantasy Mm -hmm. Okay, it's better to be in reality and go, hey, I turned left and I got slapped really hard across the face. <laughs> yeah. Do I really want to wake up on Saturday morning and take that same exact turn mm -hmm. and then get slapped again? Well, you know, some people are dense, some people are stubborn, some people are slow. So whatever you have to do in order to grow, 
focus on being honest with yourself. Some people are honest with others. It's easier for them. They're dishonest with themselves. Other people are really honest with themselves and dishonest with others. And when I say dishonesty, it's different than lying. What I mean is allowing someone to attach to where you are at an emotional level in relationship to whatever it is you're experiencing. Okay. And that can be difficult. Yet I think it's important to focus on your self awareness through consistent observation and being as honest as you can with yourself. Look, eat a food. If it makes you sleepy and you eat it again, that should be telling you that that food is stealing energy from you. Mm -hmm. If you eat food and it energizes you, okay, and you feel good and you feel grounded, that should tell you that's a good food for you. Who cares what the magazine says? For Who sure. cares what, 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 what the report says? Eat foods that make you feel good. Now, if you eat a food or you drink a beverage and it makes you jittery, right? maybe that's too much stimulation for you, right? Mm -hmm. Because the beautiful thing is the mind will lie a thousand lies. The body always has to tell the truth. <laughs> yeah. The body always tells the truth. So eat something, sample something, drink something, see how it makes you feel. If you feel better, you do better. When we feel good, we do good. When we feel bad, we do bad. Mm -hmm. It's okay. so true. And the underlying premise has to be one, that you are here to become free and the greatest expression of yourself. And two, that this is your journey. There's the level of ownership in this. Like that's the subtext of all of this. I think that falls apart when you're not, when you're asleep or you're not ex accepting that you're on this path of, of this unfolding journey of self-discovery, self-embodiment, self-mastery. And if you feel that like um, you're not the one actually driving all of this, you can get stuck in that victim mindset. Does that seem true to you? Yeah, yes, for sure. And there's a certain portion of the population, um, for all the listeners here, if you go and you study a little bit of human design, you're going to see there's 12 profiles. And you can go probably to humandesign.com or pick up a book on human design or get on the internet, get on YouTube and look up human design. And there's what's called the martyr profile, right? And of the 12 profiles, one third of the planet has a, they have a three line okay and the third line is the line of the martyr right and so they're here to learn about life through trial and error and i always teach people that have a three line to celebrate your mistakes right because i was raised in the 70s okay and so whenever you made a mistake parents then delivered a punishment relative to that mistake well then what that caused you to do is to be averse to making mistakes and more focused on perfected image. And that is a, uh, a pathway that will lead to a lot of frustration and agitation, a lot of self judgment, self criticism, self disapproval. So what I say, if you have a third line and you are a mistake making fool, learn to celebrate your mistakes so that you can do what? So you can move in the world and you can take risk, make small bets. And as you take risk, there's more opportunities for growth. There's more opportunities for love. There's more opportunities for freedom. There's more opportunities for peace. Yet if you are a third line profile and you become risk averse, you will live a very small life. Mm -hmm. And then everything needs to look this way and sound this way and be this way in order for you to be okay. And there's no freedom in that because that's an excessive state of control and containment. Hmm. And how do we get out of those excessive states of control and containment? You do it by reducing your lifetime accumulated stress load. Well, yeah. well, why does that make sense? It makes sense because when your load is high, your body's tense. Mm -hmm. And when your body's tense, you're overly contained. And when you're overly contained, you're overly controlled in this very limiting environment. And then you expect mm -hmm. everyone to live inside of your box with you. Right. You have to drop the walls, get out the screwdriver, right? Undo all the screws and let those walls fall down and then step outside of that box and take a little bit of a risk. And a risk would be, hey, I feel unsafe. Hey, I feel confused. Hey, mm -hmm. I feel angry because, hey, I feel overly emotional. Hey, 
I feel manic and depressed. Hey, I feel a lot of pain. Hey, I feel self-righteous. Hey, I feel like you're doing the wrong things. Hey, I need help, right? These would be taking little risk. And as you begin to strengthen yourself to take more risk, then you take more risk. It's like I, I was at an event for the Transformational uh, Leadership Council. And while I was at that event, there were all these really amazing teachers and presenters. And so for me, I'm looking around going, okay, yes, I'll take some help from this person. Yep, I'll take some help from that person. Yep, I'll take some help from that person. And when I left the room, when, when that weekend ended, I left with a little list of all the people that I wanted to work with on certain things about myself that I know are desiring to have more transformation and growth. Mm -hmm. So now I have a whole nother team of people that are coming in and feeding me in the areas where I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so take a risk and reach out and spend your time, your energy, your resources, your skill, and your love in inviting people in who can offer you value. Right. Mm -hmm. And what could be more important in these times than transformation, yeah. than change, than transmutation, than transfiguration. Right. Because mm -hmm. in order to, when we get into those states, it offers us an opportunity to be able to heal. What are we healing? The thing we talked about in the beginning, the lifetime accumulated stress load that was passed off to you at a generational level from all of the survival based strategies that our ancestors employed decade after decade after decade for thousands of years. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I resonate with all this, obviously, deeply. I'm nodding my way through this entire conversation. I, I, a couple things that come to me from what you just shared recently. One, we all have the sense when we look around that insofar as our culture and our society and the organization of that is a reflection of our individual consciousness that gets like aggregated in terms of organizational systems, perceptions, all these things that those structures are moving and transitioning a lot right now, fast pace, and it, it's continuing in this way. So it's like, we have the opportunity to move internally with that current. And we are we, like, we are, I think, whether we like it or not, but this is a good opportunity in today to do that Two, the idea that we're taking a risk. It seems to me like we're pushing into this idea of fear of the unknown. And what's interesting is I think it, it, it seems like that's a reference point. It seems like a risk from the vantage point of, who we are now or what we are identified as now. Um, but perhaps in the tapestry of our whole lives and our truest selves coming through and like the actualization of who we really are at a deeper level beyond that, it's not a risk at all. It was almost like a potential inevitability. It's, it's uh, so it, it feels risky at this slice of awareness, but perhaps it was just the risky thing would be to do the opposite of not listening to that. Right. So there's a reference. And then the third thing that came to me is this idea that, the idea of taking risks to me seems that we must push our energy or the questions or our, our truth telling into new directions. So we're pushing out with more energy, but to do that, we also must take our awareness and bring it in. So there's this outward pushing of, of, of what we do inward turning of what we're seeing and what we're doing. So inward reflection, outer action. Whereas I think everyone is kind of, most people are flipped backwards where the attention is not on the inside mechanism. It's, out, leaking out through the senses of all the addiction patterns and all the avoidance and all the media, and then <laughs> all the outward attention with none of the uh, outward action. It's all the action is staying in this stuck, comfortable spot. Does that resonate with you? Yeah. Um, yes, a lot. E everything you seem uh, to say uh, makes a lot of sense. You're very good at the distillation process of understanding and rhetoric. And um, I think the purpose or the place where we're leading to next is receptivity, mm -hmm. right? Because when I'm in a state of receptivity, I'm making the observation internally, coming to a state of awareness that I'm in a state of inner deficiency, and then I'm reaching out to invite someone in to then help me shore up where I'm unaware, where I'm mm -hmm. weak, where I'm disintegrated, Right. And then mm -hmm. that then allows me to have 
a greater state of neutrality, but also trust mm -hmm. in the process of my own level of human evolution. And then when people see me doing that, when people experience me do that, they then start to take a little risk. Yeah. And they That's get beautiful. motivated because they can feel it. Like every nervous system is reading every other nervous system in 0 0.2 seconds. Like mm -hmm. everyone's at some level is aware. At some level, whether it's a subconscious level, whether it's mm -hmm. a super conscious level, or whether it's unconscious level or a conscious level, we're aware of those who are in our atmosphere and what they can provide for us. Right. And so the risk I'm speaking to is find an environment where you're the least interesting person in the room, <laughs> yeah. okay? And allow these other masterful, you know, love-seeking, heart-seeking, purpose-driven beings to come in and impact you with what they've been developing. Mm -hmm. Christopher, this has been a journey of a conversation. I mean, I'll reflect for me personally. Um, what I've loved about this is it's like you've been able to encapsulate so many of these deep truths that I've realized over my last decade of experience into something that's like really accessible and just feels so true. And I know that if someone's still listening to this conversation at this point, they feel the same way. And this is obviously the step one into getting into this deep work. And this is what you help people do. So I would love for you to announce to us ways that people can go deeper with you, whether it's through your book or your websites or exploring coaching and, and all the other things you offer. Like, please share with that with us in, in conclusion here. Okay. So, uh, one, thank you for pro providing this opportunity. Uh, to the listeners, look, the easiest way to get in contact with me is to go to truebodyintelligence.com. At truebodyintelligence.com, the first thing you're going to see um, when you open the page, you're going to see my book, right? For me, knowledge is power, is an opportunity to experience power. Applied knowledge is power, right? So the book's a quick read. It's a quick download. Once you have that information, you email me at support at truebodyintelligence.com. And if you're inspired, I will get on the phone with you and have a conversation. There's no cost to that. Okay. If you're vested, I'm vested. If you're vested, I'm vested. Right. Cause a lot of people helped me out along the way. And this is one of the ways that I return to favor. I return to love. I return to heartfelt action. Um, that people deliver to me. So truebodyintelligence.com, read the book, email me at support at truebodyintelligence.com, and we'll get and have a beautiful connection call, and I will serve you powerfully in some way. I love this. Christopher, thank you. Um, I will be picking up your book and reading that myself, and I hope that others do the same. Hey there, my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Fit Mother Project podcast. If you love what you heard, I have a favor to ask you. Please consider taking 60 seconds right now to leave us a rating and review on our podcast. Leaving us a review is super quick. It only takes a minute and it's so, so helpful to us as it really boosts this podcast to reach more people who need this information and this message. If you're listening on Apple Podcast, you can leave us a star rating and review. If you're watching on YouTube, you can hit the like button and leave us a comment. Overall, I truly appreciate you being with us here on the podcast. On behalf of me and my entire Fit Mother Project team, we truly feel honored and grateful to support you and your family on your journey to fantastic health. I thank you for your support of this podcast and of this mission. Also, if you're interested in joining our complete Fit Mother program and becoming an official member of our community, you can visit our website, fitmotherproject.com. And on the Fit Mother site, you'll be able to see our complete Fit Mother program along with our online store with the best supplements designed for busy moms. And you'll also find a ton of free resources like recipes, workouts, meal plans, and more. God bless you and your family. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi signing off. I'll catch you on the next episodes of the Fit Mother Project podcast.